Hello, good afternoon. I would like to continue with um, the this one, the wearing wearing cost technology. Okay. The previous uh, part, I think I have covered the um, uh, the 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 bitumen, the very start of bitumen, and then the edge, the spray work. Okay. So for for this for this session, I'm going to cover the second part, which is the edge work. Okay, so what's HVL? HVL is a mixture of uh, aggregate and bituminous binder. Okay, so with or without the mineral filler produced in the mix mixing plant. This mixing plant is um, is um, at the is a central plant. So so we'll have a look at the video clip to show that how the um, Ashfield is being produced because uh, from the um, the mixture of um, aggregates and the um, the bitumen, and then and then there'll be I think in the in the video it say it be stored in the silo, and later on they can can bring can de deposit on the truck and then the truck will bring it to the site. Okay, so in the I think in the video it says that um, instead of there's instead of <laughs> Using the term uh, bitumen, they use the liquid ash fell, okay, which is uh, the, the terminology they use in North America. Okay, let's have a look at the video. <coughs> Hi, I'm Paul Del Rio from Packy. While driving down a smooth asphalt road, have you ever wondered just how that asphalt mix is produced? Behind me is an asphalt plant where stone, sand, and recycled products are combined with liquid asphalt to make an efficient pavement material. It all starts at the stockpiles. Each pile consists of a different aggregate ranging from coarser stone down to finer sands. A loader operator hauls stone from the piles to cold feed bins. Each bin holds a different size aggregate. A conveyor running below the bins feeds aggregates into the asphalt plant. The plant operator, working in an on-site control room, can adjust how much of each aggregate size is used in the mix. Usually, the aggregate enters a large rotating drum with a gas-powered burner flame on one end. The aggregate is completely dried by the burner. Once that happens, liquid asphalt is pumped from the heated storage tanks and added to the drum, where the rotation mixes it with the aggregates. Once the asphalt is mixed thoroughly and heated, it is sent up to storage silos. Some silos are only designed to hold material for a short period of time. Other silos are heated and can store mixes for several days. Some plants will use more silos depending upon the number of different mix types needed. Beneath the silos is the loading area. Dump trucks will receive material and then haul it to the paving site. A weight scale is usually located on the load. <coughs> okay. So uh, the Asheville um, work just now you see the at the central plant is quite it's quite different from the one um, about the see the ceiling. The ceiling is uh, whereby you know the the you have a bituminous truck. They um, spread the bitumen on the on the rod, and then followed by the chips being spread on the rods, which is which uh, the process is being done in situ. Whereas for the asphalt asphalt work, the uh, the material is uh, being uh, totally uh, prepared at the at the central plant, and then bring to the site. Later on, uh, which will be uh, spread, put on the spread and for spraying and compaction later on. Okay, so the primary division between the mix type for this asphalt is in terms of particle size distribution, generally known as um, the gradient. So, um, we have different mix type. Um, we how do you differentiate them depending on the particle size? Distribution. Okay, so so these are the particle size distribution. 
you know, you I think you probably have done the um, uh, the part the part particle size uh, the gradient in the um, probably geotech geotech one. So um, for this, there are many different mix type. Can for this there are different as well. So they have a different curve which shows the different particle size distribution. Okay, which we will, we will talk about more of it later on. <coughs> and and then within each gradient types, uh, each gradient type means it's uh, represented by one one curve. Okay, so just now we saw we have a uh, four curves. So each each within each gradient type, there are further variation in terms of the binder types as well as the types and proportion of the components material for particular applications such as ultra thin surfacing so even like for one type one uh, you have certain particle size distribution you have a um, different binder you could use a single grad you could use a multi grad you could use um, uh, the polymer modifying binder so that will produce a different type different strand of um, this on the edge file, okay. So besides that, we have other things as well. You can adjust the the avoid. Uh, you can uh, other thing that also the the size the size of the aggregate. You could use uh, for example, you could use a uh, ten mm or fourteen mm or twenty mm of aggregates, which you pro produce actually could you which you produce different type of strand, which different okay. So so the principal mixed types we we have four types okay so the first one is a dense dense graded as well dense graded as well uh, we call it the short the short form is a DGA and it's also called the um, asphaltic concrete asphaltic concrete AC okay so AC uh, asphaltic concrete um, so the diagram on the right hand side dense graded as well um, yeah probably it's not easy to differentiate uh, the as well you know the, but this one is uh, you know the um, later on we will look, talk, look more on it the this uh, ten, dense created as well it has um, it has all the um, uh, dense created as well it has all the sizes of the aggregates you know the from the Big, biggest big size to the intermediate size to the fine aggregates okay so it's the only i think it's only one which has the so of the it has all the sizes of the aggregates okay secondly is the open graded as well oga also called the open graded forest uh porous as well OGPA so it, it could be called OGA or it could be called o, OGPA or it could be called open graded friction friction cost OGPC OGFC okay so um, so this is the open grade open graded as well um, what you can probably see is that you know the um, quite a lot of cost aggregates you know cost aggregate and then it's quite porous you see there are so many you know the openings you know it's not very um it's it's not very very smooth the surface is not very smooth but although it's quite the tech quite a lot of texture and then uh it seems to be permeable you know so this open this is open graded uh as well <clears throat> the third one is stone mastic uh as well sma so this one is stone mastic as well um, it also is um, so of a, uh, it, it shows that it has a quite a lot of um, big size I could get as compared to the dense graded as, as well you know dense, dense graded as well has less uh, cost I could get than the stone mastic as well you know the compare comparatively the then the DGA has um, a mixture a mixture of uh, you know big small mid medium and small whereas this one you know it has a um, big aggregates and then the small aggregate so there's a stone mastic as well and fourthly is the fine fine gap graded as well 
find gap greater as well FGGA. <coughs> so this one the um, FGGA the find the um, it is actually it has a um, quite a smooth surface you know at this one the um, um it, it has a very smooth surface but this I think this diagram probably probably didn't show that as much um uh, I don't know where is the, the, the other diagram I don't know um because uh, it's it's supposed to be uh, quite smooth um I think it's here well how come it doesn't show it okay so this one the gap um this one the gap created as well it's a quite smooth surface quite smooth surface so um, and because uh, the this one the gap created or or in in just now we call it like the fine gap created as well is typified by later on we we look at it typified by very uh, large amount of uh, fine aggregates the cost aggregate is much less okay it's probably probably about 30 to 40 35 percent cost aggregate okay Okay, so we move back. Um, okay, so the particle size distribution and mixed components of the various as well are in these two figure. Um, in the in the following in the uh, it's in the actually in the in the um, hyperlink. Okay, the the particle size distribution is in the figure two point one, and the mixed component of the various as well in figure 2.2 I think I've, I've shown you the figure 2.1 so the so the various uh, the uh, the particle size distribution you can see that you know the the red one is a dense crater as well which has a uh, uniform size of uh, they have it has the made all the sizes of the as you know the and then for the uh, the the open graded ash felt it has um um you know up to here this is the this is the dividing line between the cost and fine aggregate so it shows that you know this is about um nine I think is um so uh this one about more than more than uh this one about maybe it's six here about six percent so actually it shows that you know the the cost aggregate it has about 90 plus percent cost ag aggregate the remainder is the fine aggregates for the stone mastic aggregate stone, stone mastic ash felt it it has a quite a lot of large ag aggregates large uh, cost aggregate as well you know up to this part but it has less you know the uh, that means that the cost aggregate is about from from here to here is about um, 10, 20, 20, 30, about 20 plus, 20 plus or 30, okay. So um, probably about 70% is the cost aggregate and then 20 plus percent is the fine ag aggregates. Okay, so uh, so the, the sun mastic has quite, has a lot of, um, um, the this one the the cost aggregate and then about twenty percent fine aggregates okay so uh, it, it doesn't show have much um the the intermediate size as well you know um for the open uh the dense ag okay we have talked about the dense graded as well the fine gap the fine gap ag uh graded as well this one uh, it has about um, this one is a reverse of the storm mastic as well. It doesn't it doesn't have a lot of cost aggregate. It probably about you know this one is uh, just ten division one ten twenty thirty about thirty plus percent uh, cost aggregate and the remainder will be the um, a lot of fine aggregates. Okay, the, this is a gap created so it's uh, that mid intermediate side is missing so. It has uh, about 20, uh, 10, 20, 30, 30, about 30, 30 to 35 percent 
cost aggregate and the remainder are the fine aggregates. Okay. And this one, um, okay, the, this shows the filler, you know, the uh, how much filler, you know, the inside there. So this one, the filler, they show the different content. The red one is uh, here about about 10%. Uh, all these are the, um, the open graded, the storm mystic, and then the um, the few uh the fine gap fine gap graded h felt they have around ten percent filler you know the this one the, if pass through the zero point zero seven five um micro the meter or seventy five micrometer they are considered as a filler okay, in the category of cray so so they are, have about ten percent of filler. And but the, the this one the open grader has much less about probably less than five percent uh, filler. <coughs> okay, we see look at the, um, the other diagram. Uh, this is the typical um, mixed component. Um, <coughs> the dense grated um grated dense grated edge felt, the stomastic edge felt, open grated edge felt, and fine grep, fine gap grated edge felt. So they are different components inside the edge felt each um so each one will each type of the edge felt they will have the cost aggregate okay cost aggregate and then they have fine aggregates the filler the bitumen bitumen or binder and avoid okay later on we see we have a i think we have um um a slide showing the different roughly the different uh the 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 percentage of the each of each of those okay so from here roughly we can say we can see that you know the uh, for the cost aggregate the um, this one the storm mastic has quite a lot of cost aggregate open graded has quite a lot of cost aggregate as well this one has much less you know fine this fine gap uh, fine gap graded has much less compared to the these two and the dense graded it has a you know it doesn't um it has a homogeneous type of aggregate you know the from here to here it has the big uh, to intermediate and um, and then the fine yeah for the fine aggregates you know the stomastic um it has uh quite big but comparatively compared to to the others is uh, it has less fine ag aggregates than the dense graded it has less, much less than the fine gap, fine gap, gap graded aggregate, uh, as well, sorry. And the, the one which has the least amount of, of uh, the fine aggregate is the open graded. You see the open graded. For the aggregate uh, part, they will have, it has a lot of big, the cost aggregate, and quite a um, small number of fine aggregates. For a small amount, okay. Uh, for the um, the filler, okay, for the filler which is shown by this are uh, the white portion, uh, the white portions. So you can see that the filler for the filler type, the one with the most filler are the fine gap grated, and then the stone mastic gap, stone mastic um, as well. Um, and then the dense grated has has less, and the one open grated has the least, has the smallest amount. For the bitumen, roughly from this uh, diagram, we can see that you know the um, the one with the most bitumen are the fine gap grated, fine gap grated, and then the storm mastic gap grated, uh, storm mastic um, as well. These two, followed by I think these two, the open grated and the dense grated. They have uh, slightly less. As well, sorry, slightly less uh, bitumen. Okay, and the last one, the last uh, the the white portion, they are the air void. You can see that you know the the one of the the biggest amount of air void is the open graded. You know the, the big um big uh air void is about I think that time we will see it's about eighteen percent to twenty five percent of this air void. So that's why it's called open graded. Um, 
the one and then followed by this uh these two are almost the same the ten squared um ten squared and stochastic yeah the, then they don't have that much avoid and then the fine gap created as the least amount of avoid okay so these are the the typical mixed component of the these four mixes <coughs> so in most cases in most cases for all this um this four ash felt they are um, hot mix they are hot mix hot leg that's aggregate is been heated mix and hot binder and place while while hot so so all these are the um, the ash felt this the four types of ash felt that have been prepared at the central plant and they prepare that you know they're really hot um and then they are heated you know then then bring to the side for the for for laying so hot mix the temperature range should be um let me see um um this one the, the temperature range of the um, different the hot ash felt will be between 150 degrees to 200 degrees celsius so that's uh, the op the temperature for this hot ash felt you know the the others that we have talked be talk about before the warm ash felt is from 100 to 150 and then the core is at room, room temperature <coughs> <coughs> So, uh, we look at the composition. We look at the particle size, uh, particle size, uh, the um, uh, distribution, and then we look at the production. We, I think, we just uh, briefly look at the how they do the compaction as well. So we try to see uh, how is it different from the um, this uh, the chip ceiling. The chip ceiling, uh, you know, the chip ceiling. What they do actually, they just they just um um. The spray the spread the bitumen truck spray the um, bitumen and then followed by the chip the chips the chip trucks where is this one you know the they get the the bit the ash felt the ash felt is the mixture of aggregate and the, the ash felt the aggregates and the bitumen and then they bring on bring to the side hot hot okay so I just have a look at the the ash felt parvin. So these are the this is the process the truck um, bring brings um, the ash felt from the side from the sorry from the center plant and then they keep it to the hopper of this uh, spreader the spreader will uh, push in the truck forward and spreading the of the um, uh, the um, spreading of the ash felt and then the compaction of ash felt <coughs> okay so um, the um, we have different type of ash felt <coughs> we need to um, to try to um, name them 
how to how do we uh, label them? What so if because we have different type, we have the the dense grated, we have the open grated, we have the stomastic, we have the um, gap grated. So we we have to lab, call every one of the uh, they have to label them uh, correctly. Also the so for this one, for example, this is the um, this ash, this asphalt been to be used. So we call it. This is called AC fourteen at the three two zero R. So we in this um in this name. So we have the the first one. The AC is a mixed type. You know AC. You know uh, AC means asphaltic concrete, which is actually means uh, dense grade hot mix asphalt. Okay. Other if you got other types, it could be OG or SMA or FGG. Okay. And the fourteen is the not the nominal size nominal size of the aggregate so um so 14 is the i, I think they just call it the, like the 14 size aggregate you know the um it means that actually the like the the big the maximum size about 14 mm and the compaction cycle so this at the uh what does that mean that's mean uh it defined the um, uh the Sort of the traffic, whether it's uh, for light, medium, or heavy traffic. I just show it here. Um, <coughs> so, for example, you know the uh, the uh, if if it's a uh, light is 50, 50 cycles, medium is eighty cycles, heavy is one twenty cycles, very heavy is one twenty or three fifty cycles. So uh the just now that we saw the one is at these cycles that means that traffic uh specifies for the um, the medium okay and um the binder type is the the class of binder is 320 okay 320 so uh this is a single grated uh single grated bitumen 320 uh, we could have other types you know we have the multi-graded multi-grade asphalt or we could have the the pm pmb which is uh the polymer modified um binder r r is the additional suffix um this one is just additional letters may be used if required to designate special mix requirement for example r is indicate to a bitumen rich mix uh bitumen rich mix use as a um, R is to indicate a bitumen rich mix used as a high binder content fatty layer or a V to indicate high void for every heavy traffic um, let me see where is the one let's see so for, for example you know the R R here is you know, the, the one R so this is um R for the crumb uh crumb rubber and the rate to the mix. So we have this, you know the um we got R, you know R and they got the later on they got P, I think the P is the you know the um we got got the, we have the different type E P um this is typ typically this is for the polymer modified bind binder. The, we don't have that for the um, the single grade single grade um, the binder or the multi grade binder. Only for the polymer, um, which shows the you know the different type of um, how much um, like A twenty five E A is for the asphaltic class A and twenty five just arbitrary number. And E for the elastomeric polymer type. So we have different types. E or can the R I think it's a crumb the crumb rubber. Okay. <coughs> so that's about the um, uh the how to we um so we have to name the, the type of mix, you know, do we, we call it we have a you have the different code, the name here. We we they have different, um, the different 
the alphabet, different letter, and the different uh, the 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 numerical numerical values. So we, we that they all means certain thing. Okay, so the nominal size of the aggregate normally is about like f for the this for the surface surface cost is five to fourteen forty mm. Okay, five to forty mm. Uh, actually later on we we'll see that uh, the the this one the the nominal size also determine the thickness of the ash fell. Um, <coughs> just go uh, for the. <clears throat> the thickness um okay so we see that the thickness the nominus nominal size of the ash, the uh the aggregates you have a smaller size for example 7 mm um the aggregates then we the the thickness of the ash fell is about 20 to 30 if you have nominal size is 20 uh, the thickness will be uh, 50 to 80 mm thick. If you want to have a very thick ash fell, like 100 mm, 100 to 160, then you have to use the 40. Uh, the nom the size of aggregate is 40. Okay. <coughs> okay, so I said that's about the nominal size. Compaction cycle, I think we, we have looked look at that bef up, uh, before that you know the um, this this uh, is is about the the type of traffic is whether it's a light or medium or or heavy or very heavy so the 50 is um, for the light traffic 80 is for the medium and 120 is for the heavy traffic okay the binder type of the class binder type of class so uh, um, this one we 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 use the Australian stand standards. Okay, the Australian standard grades used in HFL are 170, 220, and 600. These are those for the single single grade uh, H, the bitumen. So the the 170 is less viscous, 220 is more viscous, and 600 is the the, the most viscous. Okay, uh, in this in this uh, uh, is um. Higher viscosity, this higher viscosity. Other binder binder types that can be used are the multi grade binder. So that means you could have a one seventy and six hundred. So this multi grade and polymer modifying binder. Okay, I think we showed that before. These are polymer. Uh, these are the polymer modifying binder, which can be used for ash fell. Okay, and then. We see that in order, this is the M, M stand for multi grid, and then the, the A, this one, the one, all this, this shows that the, these are the, the PMB, the polymer. So these are the, the different, different type of um, polymers, okay. Additional suffix, so we, I think we talked about that bef before. The R, is, you know, you have, wait, there is a, um, what do what does that mean by by those thing you know the the R and then E all this all this value okay <coughs> the primary type of ash felt use is the dense graded hot mix ash felt also known as the ash felt concrete so uh, out of the four ash ash uh, ash felt mix uh, the um, asphaltic this one the dense graded the the open grade open graded the um, stomastic and then the gap graded the um, most pop the most common one use is the dense graded okay dense graded dga or we just call it ac okay the table for a3 give informa information on the selection of dense wearing cost mix this table also provide advice on binder binder to use in the laboratory design voids and compaction level so this dense grated is the most common commonly used uh ash fell. So it cater for the all the it can be it can cater for all the different traffic cat category. You know the light, the medium, heavy and very heavy. So so this uh the compaction cycle, the labor laboratory compaction cycle will be 
correspond to this uh, you know the 50 to light 80 to medium 120 to heavy 120 and 350 to very heavy so uh, the, the this is the a void of the, the the AC or the DGA so there's about four percent or five percent so the, you see the binder the binder actually they use um, all the variety of um, actually use make use all the variety of the HFL, you know the 170, 320 um, you could use both so medium you could use the 170, 320 as well heavy you could use 220 or you could use 600 or multigrade or PMB or 220 very heavy you could use 600 multigrade or PMB so uh, what do we mean by what do we mean by the light the traffic category light medium heavy or very heavy um, so uh, these are two traffic category if it's free flowing or if it is a stop the cr stop start crime 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 bin lens or slow moving so these are the uh, you know they got mm, so they have this light medium so that um, we uh, this the traffic traffic volume uh, commercial vehicle per lens per day correspond to the you know the two traffic category either it's a uh, free flowing or this um the second one stop start or camping land or slow moving so we got the different amount of um commercial vehicles so less than 100 consider as a uh, light in this for free flowing if it's 100 to 500 consider consider as medium 500 to 1000 consider as heavy uh, and more than 1000 consider as very heavy uh, bear in mind this is uh, you know the how many how many co commercial vehicles you know the semi trailer or the big one you know the not the not the motor the not the small motor motor car or the uh, whatever you know this so and then we consider per lens per day so one lens only a rod can be you know two lens it can be two lens two way it could be a motorway it could be three lens uh it could be three lens on on one direction and three lens on the other direction so but we are going to consider one lens and per day so these are the you know how how they categorize the different vehicles the design level then we call it the um, like esa equivalent uh standard excel we we're not, probably not, not going to talk about much this uh, for this uh, course this is uh, the design traffic which we're going to talk more in the highway 2 okay or, or in the degree called the highway design and maintenance so we can use this um the um, the design traffic these are the design traffic to for the design of the rods okay <coughs> Okay, so um, <clears throat> other mixed type may also use for particular service requirements. Such mixed type are listed in table A1 and shows schematically in figure A1. So um, the other types that we use, they are, they are not as common as the dense graded as well, but they also they, are, they have their own um, the spe uh, specialized area we have the mixed type open graded we have some mastic and fine graded so if you're concerned with the noise or spray reduction water spray if you want to have a low noise low noise uh, rod or not not much water spraying on the rod during the wet day then you could consider open graded if you want something that cost texture and good rutting resistant you know very very strong rod very tough rod a lot, very nice texture texture is good for the skid resistant you know the storm mastic is good then you can use the storm mastic as well and you want to have um, for low traffic situations the durable mix so sometime in the um, certain place um, Let's say the residential area. Residential area, um, you want you don't have that that much traffic, but you want you you want to 
you want the peppermint to last a long time durable mix so you could cons consider the fine gap grated okay incidentally you know the like in Auckland here uh, if the traffic is very low you will no chance to use a fine gap grated they will always use the chip seal <coughs> okay we let's talk about the dense grated ash fell um, <coughs> okay so we, I'm going to uh, for this the four type of ash fell I'm going to refer to a diagram as well okay so um, we, because they each of the uh, the ash fell they have this um, uh, the the different the, they have different things that we need to consider for example the the aggregates cost and the fine aggregates and then we need to consider the the a void we need to consider the filler we need to consider the the binder we need to i can just show you you know we need to consider the this one the the dense grid, the aggregates cost and then it's fine and then we consider the filler this is a filler the bitumen and the air void so we later on actually we need to look at each one of them the four of them they have slightly different composition you know the, for the dense grated as compared to stone mastic as compared to open grade and as compared to fine uh, fine gap grated okay, they have slightly different composition we need to consider later on so for this um, dense grated ash fell, um, it has um, the the air void is about three to seven percent. Um, so so for the durability, you know the dura uh, the durability of the um, ash fell, you know the um, is determined by the. Um, the in situ air void and binder content actually um for this i need to mention that you know the du the durability of the ash fell is determined by the binder you know the um, if you have a lot of binder that means it's going to be more durable also the the harder dur the harder binder will be more durable than the than the um the uh the um, less viscous binder okay uh, I mean the the good binder, for example, the polymer binder, or even even the better one, the epoxy. They are the they going to last a long, long time. Okay, and so there are different type of um, different type of binder types. You know, we we have the single type, single binder, no single single grade bitumen, multi grade, the PMB and even you know the epoxy as well i could get characteristic um what type of mix is it is it the um, singles is it um homogeneous is it the gap quoted you know you have big one big size and once and one small size you and then you're lacking the intermediate size the filler type so what sort of filler you use um you need to have fillers the more filler then you know if you got more bitumen you need more filler to solve to uh you know to um it, it's a bit like the the concrete you know if you have you have a lot of cement then you need more sand the fine uh, the sand if you have if a lot of cement and then you you just um a lot of cost aggregate then it's not going to um, the cement pass is not is not there. You know, the cement pass is, is actually is the con the cement pass is actually is the cement with the sand. So similarly, the this one the bitumen, you know, the 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 uh the um, what's it called the mastic, you know, the mastic, actually is a bitumen and a filler. And to some uh, some case, actually is the uh the fine aggregate as well. The bitumen mixed with the the filler. Here yeah, and then sometimes mix with the um, fine aggregate that produce the, uh, the um, mastic, you know, the um, soft the, um, pe the pest, the the bitumen pest. <coughs> okay, so so there are a lot. Uh, they depend a lot of this. Uh, 
the durability depend on the type of bitumen, uh, the amount of bitumen, and the filler, and sometimes they even additive as well. Okay. Okay. The dense grated mix are usually mix spread and compact while hot. Do or do mix incorporate cut back bitumen and bitumen emulsion binders maybe mix place and compacted at ambient temperature so you see that you know the this dense created mix um it cater for all sort of traffic you know all all sort of um um this one the um, this dense created um all sort of traffic uh the it can be used for light medium heavy and heavy here is it mentioned in just a single grade but you know uh just now we said that you know the we can even use the besides the single single grade uh, bitumen we could use the uh the warm as well the warm um what is that uh let me see where is video you can you can even use the cut back bitumen cut back bitumen bitumen emulsion so this one you can use it as a warm mix or it could be the um, uh, probably we don't we don't use the uh, we, we we use it okay the um, we could use the emotion binder uh, the bitumen emotion binder that means that you don't you don't need to heat it to a very high temperature okay so this one probably you know is um uh when you when you let's for example if you use a bitumen uh, the cut back bitumen and the hot mix so the warm mix will be um will be will not be as hot it's the operate operating temperature is about 100 to 150 as compared to the hot mix you have to, have to be like 150 to 200 degrees celsius so this one will be less the warm mix if you use a um, cut back or the even flux or bitumen this one will be uh, less health and self less health hazard okay so for if you use the um, cut back or use the bitumen emotion okay okay the strength of the continuous or dense grated asphalt is mainly derived from the friction between aggregate particles and the viscosity of the binder at the operating temperature so the the strength the strength is from the um, friction between aggregate particles and the viscosity of the binder at the operating operating temperature so the strength of this um this type of mix the dense created as um this one mainly due to the um the friction between the cost aggregate uh, between the aggregates and also between the binder or the binder pass this bitumen mixed with the filler mixed with the fine aggregate it produce it provide them the 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 pass the binder pass which are caught on the 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 um, cost aggregate so this provide the strength strength of the we will see you now as compared to open grade open grade you know the strength will be only friction this one because you don't have much cement pass because there are very little amount of filler very little amount of the the, the fine aggregate, aggregate so there's not much um the pass or the called the mastic so so, so for this open grated it is mostly um due to the the, the strength is due to friction and this one the stone mastic it has a lot it's at both good friction because they have a lot of big size aggregate that produce the the friction between the aggregates and also they have a good um bitumen pass mastic m-a-s-t-i-c mastic Okay, so because you're not know, bitumen and then you got a lot of filler, you know, about eight to twenty percent to twelve percent, and then you have a lot of this um the fine aggregates, you know. And same thing for the fine aggregates, the fine gap aggregate as well. This one the um, friction is not that much, you know, the friction because there are not not many big size aggregates. The you don't have many big cost aggregates, you know, the cost aggregate. You have a lot of fine aggregates so there will be the the mastic the bitumen mastic or bitumen pass will be very it's a lot it's a lot, a lot of, this one mostly based on the strength of the the bitumen you know and and um, um 
bitumen and the because a lot of pests, you know, your filler, your, a lot of filler, a lot of this um, the fine aggregates. So this, the most of the strength is between the the based on the viscosity of the binder. Okay. <coughs> So by varying the, the aggregate application com, uh, aggregate combination to provide a range of different air voids and using different grades of binder, H felt properties can be altered to suitable to suit application ranging from low traffic traffic uh strict to freeware to heavy duty such as airport and container. So So you can have a different type. You the dense grated H file can use for all the different category you know, by varying the different type of binder. <coughs> so the dense grated H file is the most commonly used mix and is generally used for um, all these um, various applications, strengthening and ex assist existing pavement, correcting irregular irregular irreg irregularities in existing pavement, repairing an existing pavement, <coughs> construction of new pavement, improving surface properties, the wearing surface of new and existing pavement. So these are the uses. <coughs> the advantage of these are the DGA, the, um, the dense uh, dense graded edge felt. Uh, it has a lower initial cost, lower initial cost. And because it's the most commonly used, and most of the people, most of the contractor, they they are familiar with this um this asphalt, so they know how to use it. Because compared to as to other things, the porous, they might have a different methods you know, of application of of applications. So this one, most of the contractor, they are familiar with it. So these are the, the advantage advantage. Because uh, if you want to do a uh, uh, the project. You want to spread the pavement properly, uh, and the the right methods. So you the contractor need to be, uh, they need to know the 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 job well. They need how to do this type of uh, as well. They may not be able to do other things because some of the thing if you involve the, um, uh, for example the storm stick probably there is more. They have got other things, other requirement that's needed. Because you the you involve much more bitumen compared to the DGA. Uh, the disadvantage of the DGA, um, the DGA cannot accommodate high binder content without becoming in unstable and susceptible to rotting. So this um the DGA you know is different from the the storm mastic or the gap crater. Um, you cannot increase the binder content. <clears throat> so the binder content in this case is like um five percent, whereas for the stone mastic is six to seven percent, about seven percent. You cannot increase because if you increase the strength of the um, uh the ash, the dense uh dense grated ash well, it could increase the strength as well. You know, it could increase the. Um, uh, the strand of the um, the whole thing the the ash felt. Why is that? The, you can't increase the 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 binder content because uh, you know it, it doesn't have enough um, filler and it does and the filler you know the, the filler is is needed uh is to provide the the this one the bitumen pass you know uh it has quite a quite a bit of this uh, the, but the fine the um, fine aggregates they are not as good as a filler the filler usually need to uh, provide the bitumen pass or the mastic okay so compared as compared to this uh, stone mastic it has a quite a big amount of um, the filler at to 3 percent at to 3 percent down here as compared to about two to six percent so you cannot for this dense created ash felt you cannot um, Increase the um, the bitumen content. <coughs> okay, so you cannot accommodate high binder content. And secondly, relative low amount of binder are typically used in DGA, which in turn makes them more susceptible to cracking, 
and more permeable. So you see, if you don't use a lot of bitumen, then the thing is um uh the the cohesion adhesion is is not there. So it's um quite susceptible to cracking. Okay, if you got a lot a lot of bitumen, probably there'll be less cracking. And if a lot of bitumen, there'll be less permeable. You know, if you have more, sorry, if you have less bitumen, there'll be more permeable. If you have more bitumen, it'll be less permeable. The texture of DGA is relative, relatively low, and this can be, and this can affect the weather traction of the vehicle. Why is that? Because it's um, not many, the, um, the cost aggregate is, as compared to this domestic or the open grade, graded asphalt is not as as much, you know. This one, um, probably is is the the texture is not that much. Okay, probably better than the fine get, fine gap graded, but it's uh less compared to some mistake and that. So you can see the texture. I just the texture depth. You know the um, dense graded asphalt. You know for this table. Uh, the top one is the greatest, the bottom is the least. So the the dense crater asphalt actually is um is almost at the at the bottom, you know, compared to the others, you know, the the asphalt, the open grater is up there, the stomach is up there as well. So this this one only slightly higher than the fine gap fine gap grated asphalt. <coughs> So that's, those are the advantages and the disadvantage of the HFL. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is the open, open graded HFL. Okay, uh, the, for the open, open graded HFL, Okay. It's called OGA or OGPA in New Zealand. Um, okay, so I, so this this one is the you know the um, I think we, we we have to refer. It's better. It's easier for me to refer back to the this slides here. You know the um, uh, the so the um, I just briefly go through the open open graded uh, HFL. Okay, so um, for the aggregates, uh, most uh, the most of them they are cost the cost aggregate. Okay, the and then ten to twenty percent fine aggregate, that which is uh, below five mm or that can pass through the four point seven five mm sieve. Okay, so there's um not many there's not much uh, fine aggregates. Okay. And then the aggregate that we're going to use for the open grade is mostly the 10 mm or the 14 mm size. Okay, um, not much filler. Okay, not much. Um, two to three point five percent filler. As this one, the bitumen, um, about three point five to five point five percent of of bitumen, or just call it binder, and um, bitumen that we're going to use here. Uh, it's a class 320 it's the um, uh, average um, sort of uh, viscosity can is capable for for the heavy uh, heavy traffic and or, or for the uh, PMB as well PMB there are different types you know there are different some is um, um is uh, stiff the uh, the stiffness is, is higher than the others okay so there are different type of PMB and uh, one of the um, most important features of this open graded um HFL is the um, the avoid. You look at this uh, the avoid the open graded avoid is eighteen to twenty five percent avoid. You know as compared to the others, the open grade only open graded only about three to seven percent, storm mastic three to five percent, and the avoid for the gap grader is about four percent. So this one is the um, is the most important um. Uh, just of most important features of this open graded. That's why it's it's called open graded. You know, um, because of this particular 
the usage that, that is needed for this open grad open graded HFL. So large it has a um, high air void and so you know 18 to 25 percent the strand uh as compared to the um, to the op this one the dense graded HFL you know the dense graded HFL is they use the um, also mechanical interlock friction between the the aggregates and as well as the um, uh, the binder binder strand the binder pass you know the the bitumen mix with the um, filler and the um, final aggregates they produce the 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 binder strand so but because this one there's not much um filler there's not much final aggregates so there's not much the bitumen it doesn't um, provide it's only used to cut the aggregates so most of the strand is derived from this mechanical interlock so the friction you know one of the all the aggregates push into each pushing each other that provide the mechanical interlock and then the bitumen sort of uh, cut cut the aggregates and and, and provide the adhe adhesion to join to to sort of uh, to um to make into one 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 structures okay so um because of this high high air void 18 to 25 percent is uh, permeable okay very permeable very porous and and as i think we said earlier if there's uh, not much bitumen not much uh, the bitumen is not high and then it's not not much filler then it's not going to be durable okay uh, so the um, so this um the the open graded ash felt is less durable than the than the dense dense type meats okay um it's actually it's the least durable you know compared if you look at the service life is seven to fif 15 years for this uh open graded dense crater is uh, eight to 20 years can go up to about 20 years stomastic can reach up to 20 years and the gap graded can reach up to 25 years so this one is has the shortest life but if you change the um, uh you know the, the um the durability of the the mix it can be improved by the by the type of binders okay if you use the um, high um if you use the modified binders the pm pmb and actually it will increase the um, increase the um uh, the, the the life of the the durability of this um as well um okay um so yeah okay so the next slide um the um, uh, oga the, the the main use of the oga um uh, these are the five things they are the very good for skid resistant you know because it has a, it has a very good texture you know the i think i, I just go to go to that uh, slide again texture let me see where's the texture here uh, the texture you know the um the texture typical relative texture step of new bituminous surfacing open graded as well actually is a ran uh, almost a top almost a top after the spray seal 10 m m 10 mm okay <clears throat> and i think with that i think we the second one also relevant i think the next point uh, there's the um, the noise level noise level is going to be actually is um the lowest um you see the bottom here the the least the, the open graded hfl has the least noise as compared to the others you know the spray seal is very noisy it's a noisy surfacing um the open grader is the lowest uh better than the stomastic better than the then then graded hfl better than the fine graded find gap graded as well so this one's the best for noise <clears throat> okay so okay the um, riding a uh, good riding surface okay i think most of the as um, well they, they have a good riding surface you know as compared to um to the to the sprays to the chip seal okay 
it's um it's much smooth smooth the uh riding surface you know of course you know everything if I compare to this uh unsealed rod unsealed rod has the worst riding surface so um this um this is a uh, the most of the edge felt have good riding surface okay um yeah so one i think the all of them i think that's grated or the uh that's open grated or stone mastic or the gap grated you can all you can write on on the surface you can write you can reach 100 100 plus k reduce light reflection uh this one is the the open this one the uh, open open grid open uh open grid okay porous ash fell um it's not very because it has a quite a, uh good texture so it doesn't reflect light as much as the other you know it's if you have if you have very smooth surface very shiny very rough if the surface is too smooth um something like this you know the gap created this one has more reflection than the than this um open open graded as well so this one the it's not so glaring you know especially you know in when the sun the sun is shining very brightly this one probably there's not much uh, reflection okay reduced higher noise i think just now we see that because this um uh, it's a it's a one that it performed very well in the noise it has the least noise reduced water spray okay so because it's a uh, porous the water can just um seep through the the asphalt and then it can just drain away um to the to the side of the rod okay so it has all this good um uh, this uh the good characteristic okay let's have a look at this uh no spray video okay i i will go to the video clips instead of the youtube so to see how 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 the um, OGA perform in the on a wet day as compared to the other uh, other type of mix. Okay, so I go to the open greater edge felt. <coughs> so you can see that you know uh, this this land here is the open greater edge felt, and that one is uh, another type. Um, it could be other types, you know, the, even the uh, the dense grated or whatever. You know, this one just that this rod is a bit um sort of. Uh, <laughs> I just run again. It's a bit sort of uh, specific, you know. You have a uh, two lines, you have different type of uh, different type of surface, different type of edge felt, you know. But this it showed very well that you know the how the porous edge felt, you know the. It can perform during the wet day. You know, have, you can drive more confidently. <clears throat> okay, so that's um, about the open, open graded asphalt. So that it's really they have all this. Um, it, even though it's not the most common type of asphalt, but it has all this characteristic. You know, if you want to have, um, um, let's say, if, if you are have a lot of um, rainfall you want to have your highway um, sort of uh, less water spray uh, less then it's quite good you know the all the water you actually all the pavement on top will be quite dry you know all the water will seep through the edge felt and and there's not much water spray and then if you want the your edge, your pavement to be very quiet and so this can reduce tire noise so this is OGA is a good one, okay. <clears throat> okay, so the next slide, uh, OGA mix are permeable. It's important that they are placed on the best that is waterproof to minimize vertical movement of moisture. So you know that we we always. For the rod drainage, we always want to keep the um, uh, the subgrade dry. Because if the if you if the water from the pavement on top or from the from the shoulder or from wherever from even from under the water table, if rise up to the subgrade, if you wet the subgrade, you're going to um, the subgrade going to lost 
going to lose strength and then the rod will be damaged you know the it will because the, the subgrade will have no strength and then the, the with the uh the the traffic loading the the thing will just um all the damage will, will be done because the, all the rutting all the deformations or the cracking will be will be happening if if we have a wet subgrade so it's important that you know below uh it, this is a permeable um ash uh ash felt, but you need to have a um, at the bottom at the probably you need to have a best cost which is um um which is which is waterproof okay a best uh, you could have um uh, for example, you know, even the wearing cost, the top part is the is the por porous asphalt, but the bottom part, actually, you can have another one. Maybe it's a dense, dense graded asphalt. So, so you the water can go sideways because the rod that it has a cross fall, so the the water will drain to the side. <clears throat> um, OGA is not recommended for use in at intersection due to the relative low shear resistance and potential for oil dropping to soften the binder so this one the OGA is not very strong it's not it's not very because the um, the bitumen the it doesn't have it doesn't have a lot of bitumen pads which can um which can provide a, that sort of uh, adhesive strength to to hold up all the aggregates together you know because it's just the bitumen, most of the just bitumen caught the 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 the, the, the aggregates. It's it's not very strong in the it's it's strong in the friction because there's stone uh the stone to stone contact but the it doesn't has the the bit, bitumen pass you know to provide the mastic structures. So it's not very so it's not very good in shear resistance. So you know the intersections or even at the like if you have a um, cornering where a lot of this shear 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 uh, the shearing happening so that one is a high stress area so we we cannot use the OGA at those places I just go to the um, the shear resistant let me see um, <coughs> Oh, just um, the spray water spray um, this one the characteristic so just now I, I think uh, yeah I just saw the open grid ash felt has a very um, low water spray okay so low com as compared to the other storm stick you know it is uh, performing averagely and um, dense grated is three um, high water spray high water spray and then the others uh, yeah so yeah the next next slide show the um, resistance to shear force so um the this one the um, open grade ash fell you know it's actually it's not performing very well it's it's at the bottom you know the the one the good the one with good shear resistance is like concrete or even dense graded ash fell it's uh, very very strong uh, I felt then stone mastic is performing very well as well. You know the if they use the PMB binder, and then squatted, you know the um, fine gap squatted. I felt is then performing is performing better than open graded as well. So this one is they it is using the um, ordin ordinary type of binder, but it performed better than the one with the the open graded. I felt using a PMB binder. So out of the all the four ash felt you know the uh actually the open graded ash felt is the worst performer um the bottom of course is the, the seal the just the chip seal uh of course they are not as good as the ash felt <coughs> excuse me okay The next one we're going going to is the fine gap grade, uh, fine gap grade ash felt FGGA. Um, this is um, fine gap grade ash felt. 
uh, just I just ref going to this uh, diagram to refresh to ref uh, to refresh. So it has a um, um, small amount of cost aggregate. Mostly they are the fine aggregates. You know the fine the fine aggregates. Um, mostly fine aggregates. Um, this one should be cost, not not C O U R S E. Should be C O A R S E. Just a typo mistake. So the the cost aggregate is only about thirty to thirty five percent. Where's the rest? The rest is the the fine aggregates, but it has a um, high filler filler uh filler at to twelve percent. The filler that are used that can be you know um it could be hydrated lime, uh cement. I think the other thing is the um that fry ash, fry ash, okay the uh, ground limestone that can be those are the um uh, the filler but this one the the all this the powder in the filler they must be able to pass through the uh this seventy five micrometer sieve okay so they need to be very fine um this one the fine aggregates is just uh, you know it's uh, about five. Uh, that can pass through the uh, 4.75 mm sieve okay and then the bitumen is quite a lot actually the com for the four type of uh, mix the actually the gap the gap grated and the storm stick they have the highest amount of uh, the binder about seven about uh, seven percent actually these two the uh, the stone stick and the fine gap grated the the filler is it's almost about the same that the three components the filler the the binder and the avoid they are almost the same you know the uh, the avoid about four percent three three point three to five percent so the three the three things are almost the same for the stomastic and the gap grated avoid the the binder and then the filler the things that are different is the the proportion of the the aggregates you know the storm stick they have more um cost aggregate whereas the fine gap fine gap created has a much smaller amount of um uh, this um the much smaller amount of um uh the cost aggregate okay but the i think the life is much longer for the fine gap aggregate because this one is mostly used for the the light traffic where this one the storm stick is used for the heavy traffic <clears throat> okay um, so the fine gap grated mix um, rely for stability on the stiffness of the fine uh, fine aggregates filler binder mixture so this one they have a very abundant amount ab um, abundant amount of um, this binder mixture because uh, you know they see that um, you have a lot of fine 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 aggregates you have a lot of filler you have a lot of binder okay you know, you know there's some um, highest amount of binder among the four um, among the, the four types you know these two are the same seven about seven percent and then they have a lot of filler you know that add to three percent add to three percent com as compared to the dense grated only about two to six percent and this one about to, uh, open grader as about two to three point five percent so they have a lot of um uh this one the this one the binder mixture you know the um, the stiffness is very is a lot actually even more than that more than the stone mastic because this one it has filler and it's even more uh the fine aggregates than this one this one the stone mastic has less um fine aggregates so this one uh the um, the strength is the the strength due to the binder mixture is is the strongest. <clears throat> okay, so the strength is a very good good strength and stability. When when used in residential <clears throat> um, streets and other lightly traffic applications, they provide a fine texture surface and walkable mix that's readily compacted to low. Uh, was it too low in too low in situ air voids? So this one the texture actually is not that good. Um, but because you use in res residential street, you probably you, you know 
we're not traveling at high speed, probably about just um, 50k or 60k on the res res residential, residential street. So um, it's all right. The texture is not that great, you know, for the um, the texture for the uh, the gap grater is tree is not no, is the 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 least out the least so the the texture depth okay. But for the for the purpose is it is doing fine you know it can it can for the low traffic road and for the res, res, residential street is is all right you know. The combination of low air voids and relatively high binder content provide an extremely durable surface as well as good fatigue resistant. It's very good, you know, it can last a long, long time. Uh, last for like, 20, you know, if you have not much traffic and then this this rod is, the um, you have a good, uh, the bind, um, it can really last for a long time. We have a good binder um, mixture. Very, it, because actually the, it's the, it's the bitumen binder. Uh, the mixture which provide the um, durability. So the FGGA mix are not generally used as a wearing cost in more heavily traffic applications. Okay, due to poor rutting resistance at high surface temperature. Okay, uh, so this one um, I have to say that you know the um big the rutin the uh to resist rutin you need to have um big aggregates the cost uh the cost aggregate you have you have to have big amount big amount of cost aggregate whereas for this one the f g g a you have you you don't have that much that that much uh cost aggregate so that's not very good in the in uh to resist the rutin Okay, and and also because the texture is so, it's the the least the the least among the four H felt, so the it's not not um suitable for high speed rod, you know, because it doesn't provide enough the the skid resistance. So you see the the cost aggregate is not not much, you know, about thirty to thirty five percent. So it, so the when there's a lot of traffic coming in, all the big big aggregates be pushed down. So I provide the surface. Um, the it's not as as strong rut resistant or the fatigue compared to the stomastic. Stomastic is very strong because it's a lot large. The cost aggregate, even the this one the for the rutting resistant, even the open grad is can be quite quite good. Uh, because it's um a lot of this uh, mechanicals this one the um, stone to stone contact only thing is that it's not very good with the shear resistance okay so this one the fine gap created is so it's not this so uh, probably probably the worst performer uh for rod resistance you know the 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 rod will be sinking you know the you got a few track of the of the vehicle you know um <clears throat> okay, so um, in U in UK, uh, this this uh FGGS sometimes they use as a hot raw H felt, hot raw H felt. Um, they because they 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 have certain the um, they call it also it it is a fine gap created H felt, but somehow they modify it to to use um. Use as a wearing cost, um, but now it's a bit because it's it, if you use a wearing cost, uh, and for heavily traffic road, because it's um then because it it has a risk of being damaged by the heavy heavy truck heavy traffic loading, so the for this hot, in UK what they do with this um hot raw asphalt is that they use a harder grade of binder because your if your Binder is harder grade. For example, you got the um, like six hundred, uh, cross six hundred, and or you use even use a PMB. You know, have a hard, harder grade of asphalt, and then the very strong, and then, and then you have a uh, that they have this polish resistant uh, bitumen coated, cause aggregate a spread and roll into the surface. 
um, because they they initially then in the gap created mix they don't have that much cost aggregate so so after they have laid the gap created ash fell they they spread this um bitumen coated cost aggregates on top and then they they compact it so this one to prov provide some additional um texture you know they 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 sort of they 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 increase the amount of cost aggregate so sort of, you know after the compaction of the the after they lay the the ash fell so but somehow uh, i think this one is um they've been i think it's better off they use the sma sna probably is, because it, it it the mix itself it has a bigger amount bigger amount of cost aggregate so it's more suitable for the for the purpose of the for the heavy traffic rod which um, need to resist the rutting and the fatigue okay the fgga mix are not used in best application due to high cost and reduced stiffness yeah okay so in in respect to the cost you know the 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 one with the mix with the highest amount of ash the bitumen it will cost more because the bitumen i think is a is the cost that is the biggest amount of cost in the ash fell so because the aggregates um yeah the problem is cheaper you know the ash fell the the bitumen is the one that is cost cost more okay and then i think you for this um gap created or stone mastic, the gap created mix you you put a lot of the filler as well not filler the the fiber inside the binder yeah so that it costs more so so actually for the 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 cost of the um, four types of uh, ash fell uh the the bigger cost actually is the the more expensive are the these two the stone mastic and the fine gap created um the ash um, felt that they, they are the more costly of course it depends on the whether you use the single grade or multi grade or pmb the pmb probably cost more than the the multi grade and in turn will cost more than the single grade so so they uh we're not going to use it for the best cost you know um uh in the best application that means that you know this is the um, um this uh the ash felt is not only used for the surface cost it can be for the it can be used for the um, uh the best cost as well uh what we call it the i think the um the the deep strand of full depth ash felt okay they i just go to the slide i think let me see um yeah so you have the deep the ash felt you know normally the ash fell is uh is for the wearing cost but sometimes you can use the the best as well or even the whole uh the best cost and sub best combined you know the, everything the paper material they have the aesthetic as cost the best okay so so uh of course they're going to not going to use the uh the the gap created ash fell because it's too costly they're probably going, going to use the um, uh uh, the the mix they're going to the type that is that uh, uh probably is the like the um what's that the the dense grated but but um need to mention that the ash felt if the the pavement material for the ash felt the, the for the wearing surface and the and the ash felt best or the, the whole thing here is quite different um for the ash felt surface the aggregates is only about you know the max probably uh probably 40 mm uh 20, mostly it's about just a 10 mm or 14 mm the the aggregates but for the ash felt best you could use up to like 40 easily and if it's used um i think you have to use the aggregates for the ash felt best or the, the whole thing it will be bigger I'm not sure whether they can, they can probably they, they cannot process the one you know um <clears throat> 75 probably is a bit too big for the um for the central plant to process the ash fell but definitely i can do with the 40 mm um ash fell okay but i think the ash fell best and the ash felt 
as uh, the the varying costs are quite different. Because they are the top one, they are directly under the traffic loading, so the aggregate seals have to be very tough. Whereas the bottom one, you don't need to. It's not directly under the traffic, the, the traffic loading, not un, under the tires, so you, you don't need to have very tough aggregates. <coughs> Okay, I have to go back something. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, storm mastic. <clears throat> storm mastic as well. Okay, this is um. Yeah, I think we talked about that earlier. This is a actually this is a cost gap graded mix, with high proportion of cost aggregate particles which interlock to form a strong ag aggregate skeleton and proper a texture of mixture surface with good resistance to rutting and shelving. So the main thing of this is uh, actually it's very good in rutting uh, resistance and shelving or the very good in fat the, uh, to resist the fatigue of the rod. Okay. Um, the mix has a high binder and filler content which provide a strong waterproof flexible mastic. Okay. So um so uh, this this actually this is um the storm mastic actually is um another version of the fine grade fine gap graded as as well. Only thing is that the the proportion of the cost aggregate is much more okay compare as compared to the gap graded which has which has much less uh cost aggregate. So so that the it has a good strength. It has a good amount of um, uh, the bit, the the cost I could get, and then it has a a lot of the bitumen, a lot of filler, a res reasonable about reasonable amount of the um, uh, this uh, fine aggregate aggregate. So there's a good strand from the bitumen binder mix mixture, and and a good strand from the big aggregates which provide the, the mechanical interlock. <clears throat> okay, so because it, a lot of bitumen and then it's it's the very it's the most waterproof, you know, both the in terms of what the waterproofing, um, both the fine, fine the the fine gap crater and the stomastic, they perform almost similarly. Okay, um, better than the stop, I think the dense crater then skirted as well. Okay, the presence of the mastic with a high binder filler content make this SMA a fatigue resistant long life surfacing. So it's very good for the um, fatigue re uh, the a lot of heavy traffic uh the stress uh at um you know all this um they can withstand all all sort of um uh the or the all the traffic, you know, the acceleration, braking, braking, it can withstand it. Okay, so storm mastic is suitable. It's a suitable surfacing for pavement with fairly high deflection and requiring requiring resistance to deformations such as signalized intersections where traffic volumes are high. You know, this thing the at the intersection, whether it's a uh, roundabout or whether it's um traffic light, you know, the the other vehicle they come to the the intersection they will break you know they, they will step stand on the brake and then when the lights are uh, turn green they will start accelerating the the tire will turn you know this as it will cause a lot of traffic this one the 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 load the stress on the on the surface so you need to have a really tough surface and then this stone mastic as well is very good in this, you know, the fatty resistant or the, you know, you, if you look at the rod, you know, the, the um, some of the rod, you see most of the damage is actually is at the in intersection. Uh, some of the, you know, the, the most of the rod when the surface, when the r traffic can go smooth, run smoothly, actually they are quite, um, quite smooth. There's no deformations, but at the, Usually at the roundabout or at the um, the signalized inter intersection, you can usually you can find a lot of cracks or 
or this one deformations some some part is uh, shoving or rutting or whatever you know so so at that at those a uh, high stress area high traffic stress area you need to have a very tough asphalt and then this storm mastic asphalt is the one that can provide the uh, that can make make up the challenge <coughs> SMA is not quite as effective as open guided asphalt in reducing noise and water spray because it is of lower air void, of its lower air void content but it is better than dense guided asphalt and also provides well textured skid resist surface so in terms of the um, texture uh, the storm mastic is uh, not as good as open guided asphalt in terms of noise uh, this dense grated asphalt uh, is not as good as the um, open grated asphalt but perform better than the um, uh, dense grated asphalt okay the most domestic and in terms of the water spray um, uh, it's not as good as the because um, it's quite good texture as well so it actually is um, but not as good as the open graded asphalt because this thing, this the open graded asphalt is a porous asphalt. Storm mastic is um, asphalt is waterproof, so the water it doesn't perform that well in terms of water spray. <coughs> However, SMA can initially have poor skid resistance until the thick mastic uh, flame is worn. From the surface aggregate so when you when the surfacing is new when the surface is new for the for the storm mastic because they, they got a lot of high a lot of bitumen a lot of this um high binder content so a lot of the surface the aggregate will be coated with bitumen so it will take a while with when the the bitumen will be worn off from the aggregates then it can provide a good skill resistance because at the beginning all the surface will be coated all the aggregates will be coated with the um, asphalt of with the bitumen so it take a while for the um, skid resistance to improve for the sma okay so we are coming to almost to the end soon um we i want to just um to i think we have finished all the four asph asphaltic asphalt mix so we're going now we want to look at something like selection of different type of asphalt so it's a sum a summary on the four types of asphalt for most wearing cost and structure asphalt applications dense greater asphalt mix type are used other mix type are used as wearing cost to provide particular surface characteristic for particular applications so the dga is the most uh, common type of asphalt it can do all the it can be used for the light traffic it can use for medium traffic it can be used for very heavy traffic that you can achieve it by varying the type of binder the even the uh the the aggregate as well you can you can vary the types of aggregate 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 to be used as well so this one is sort of the um, dga is a uh, all-rounder all-rounder as well but other thing you know the um, you could do other thing is um okay this is just a this this slide is about the effect of asphalt resurfacing treatment on existing surface same characteristic you look at the the different type of asphalt so the dense grated fine gap grated storm mastic open grated thin open graded asphalt so we didn't cover we didn't cover this so almost actually another version of the open graded so for the dense crater is um robustness shear resistant um you know these are excellent compared as compared to the others um this the, is i think for the fine gap crater is a uh, long life um there are other things as well i just, I just pick up the i think the the most important i mean the features uh, for the storm mastic is good in skid resistant and shear resistant as well water spray is quite good and the open grated is good for skid resistant excellent for water spray 
Okay, the life is not not very good though. <clears throat> okay, so um, besides the DGA, other if you want to choose the um, Open OGA, um, this one the porous wearing cost. If you want to reduce the water spray, tire noise on freeway and other high speed road. Okay, I think sometimes if you're you want to keep your rod dry during the wet weather, then the OGA is a good choice. But of course, you have to bear in mind that the OGA has a shorter life, less span than the DGA or even a stone mastic. Stone mastic as well is used to provide good surface texture and good deformation resistance on heavily traffic rod. If the, there's a lot of heavy traffic, then um, SMA is good to use because it has a longer it has a um, the longer I think the um, it's more durable than the even dense scattered mix as well okay so especially the at the intersection uh, this one is um, the Sun Mastic HFL is the best performer best performer out of the four type of HFL uh, fine gap scattered HFL uh, this one to um, good durability for lightly traffic pavement. Okay, um, if you want to um, maintenance maintenance free, you know you don't have need to um, to do a lot of maintenance maintenance job at the the this one the low traffic road and then with at the residential area, the fine gap created asphalt is a good choice. Because it has a low avoid, a lot of bitumen, but the upfront cost could be quite high, you know. So actually, like in Auckland, a lot of the um, res residential area they use chip seal instead of the asphalt. But if asphalt is to be used for the re residential area, this uh this the one the fine gap created asphalt is the one to for the residential areas. Okay, the nominal size. Uh, may be determined as a function of layer thickness of the edge felt of the layer thickness selected on the basis of nominal size required for a particular application. So actually, the if you are you know the the thickness of edge felt, uh, we we haven't designed it yet. Uh, in highway two or the called the highway design maintenance, we're going to design the tr the pavement, which include the diff we can vary the uh, the the thickness of the best course, thickness of the sub base, the strength of the of the sub the um, and also the thickness of the the, the wearing course as well. So, for the wearing course, the uh, the thickness, the thick the the thick edge felt, you probably you need to have a bigger size aggregate. Okay, um, when you have a very thin aggregates probably you need to use smaller size um, smaller size um, the aggregates of course you know the if the 14 will be quite good enough to provide the, the skip resistance you know like uh, you can actually can go down to like uh, 35 to 55 mm is which is quite thin so most of the asphalt probably they need to be um, at least 50 mm thick no, then you can use the 14 mm of uh, the, the aggregates for that for the job. <coughs> um, the selection of the binder types you can choose the various type of uh, the binder that one want to use, and this one's uh, specifically for the dense created as well. So we could use um. Various type for the dense created HFL, we can use a single size, you know, one class one seventy, class two twenty, um, for the light and medium, or we could use the three twenty or six hundred or multi grade or PM PMB for the heavy or very heavy. Okay, uh, if you for the binder types of other mix, okay, so for the open graded HFL. You can use 320 for light or hash medium, PMB for heavy or very heavy. Okay, so you could use uh, either one of that for the open grated. Stone mastic, 
you could just uh, you could for the different type light or medium you could use 320 multi grade or PMB fine grade gap graded edge felt because this one mostly for the light traffic we we don't we don't need to use for the uh, very heavy traffic so we just use a single size aggregate uh, sorry, sorry the single grade bitumen 320 okay that's the selection of the binders for the various style of mix <coughs> okay um, the surface characteristic on performance of various surface scene okay I think we have covered quite this time we got have, we have uh, gone through a few times about the texture texture depth you know this one the um, which one is better you know the we didn't do much about the seal you know we I think the seal actually they are quite good performance performers okay uh, but but we only cover about the, about the edge felt okay the, um, so we we actually have looked through which one which edge felt they are uh, good in the texture we know that like open graded edge felt and the stone mastic they are good and for the noise which one which edge felt are um, are the quiet the most quiet there is the um, open grade as well as well so domestic there so for the texture and um, noise um, this open graded as well and the storm mastic they're very good S I think same goes to the the water spray as well open grade as well performing quite good and then the, um, the storm mastic is quite reasonable okay so this one the, i think we have we have talked about quite a bit on the texture depth on the relative noise level in the water spray i think we have talked quite a bit on, on this thing so the factors that contribute to the resistance of shear force in the pavement um the the resistance you know the um, the factor what what contribute to the um, uh, resistance to shear force you know we, this this thing the um, the shear force the place that have a lot of shear force happening is at the intersection mostly intersection or at the cornering uh, corner when you when you're around the bank of the road there are a lot of shear you know that the car will when they reach the um, uh, near to a, a, a curve a bend they was um, probably stem on the brake to to slow down and then accelerate out out of the corner as well so um, the factors are the motion of the wheel so the your the tire the tire you the car you do the some braking accelerating and turning so the tire will will slow down will accelerate and then you turn so they cost a lot of shear shear the shear shear force the wheel loading um is it a motorcycle or is it a, just a, a motor car or suv or is it um uh the trailer semi-trailer 30 wheel trucks so they are um, you know this a wheel the the bigger the truck the is more damaging is the is the is the tire it can really uh, uh, the this the traffic loading is much higher. It can really, you know, to 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 damage the to sort of um to cause damage to the to the surface is much much higher for the big truck. The tire type, tire type, whether it's um off street, off street, or not not off street, uh off road, off road tire, or whether it's just um the sort of the on street tire. On, on road tire so it's just the, for the for the good road okay inflection pre pressure the tire pressure is it very high or very low so the high one the high pressure will cost more I think it will cost more um, when the when the tire is very uh, fully inf inflect so inflected you know it will be actually you um it has a smaller area the um, the tire which is not very fully inflected it has a bigger area because it's the thing you cover a bigger area so the 
uh, if you got higher tire pressure, then actually it cause more um, damage. The coefficient friction between the pavement surface and tire uh, rubber. So um, the based on the on the road surface, the texture. You know, you if the texture is very um, rough, then actually got more friction. Also, if your your tire if it's a lot of threads, actually it, it cause more um, friction as well or more shearing action. Okay, a typical resistant relative resistant to shear force of various surface type provide. Um, I think we talked about this also. You know the the good performers are the dense graded ash felt. They are good shear resistant. Um, actually, that's what we want. Um, dense grade. Storm mastic is good, uh, storm mastic and dense grated. So that these two that can be used at the um, intersection. Fine gap, fine gap grated. They are just average, and they should not be used for the heavy traffic as well. It's for mostly for the light traffic. Okay, the the um, open grated as well. They are quite a poor performer performer in the for the shear force. <coughs> Um, the typical characteristic surface line for different uh, surface type we have a look uh, that this include actually the surface condition which affect the expected life include the traffic volume if you have a lot of, a lot of traffic on the road you know the um, the traffic the design traffic is really high actually it will shorten the life even though we say maybe the pavement can last for 15 years but if the traffic is excessive, actually it may not last fifteen years. But if your traffic is actually is quite low, uh, there is less damage, and um, road actually can even though it's uh, like fifteen years uh, life, it can last more than fifteen years because of the less uh, lesser traffic volume and the climate as well. Climate, I think the um, if a lot, of, I think the sun, the sun actually can do a lot of damage to the to the uh, the um, uh, the asphalt because the land the the UV light from the sun can oxidize the bitumen, okay, so make the bitumen become brittle. So actually, um, yeah, so actually the life is uh, affected by the if you have a lot of, uh, the a lot of sunshine. So look at the life here. The uh, the different type of bitumen uh, the asphalt the the as the open graded Asphalt, the life is about you know like seven to fifteen years. You no, know? if it's a use a modifying binder, the polymer, you can probably go up to fifteen years. Okay, but and then you have to use it for the um, for the um, non intersection rod. Okay, so if you use the at the intersection, it will last much. It doesn't last that long as well. Okay, um, then scattered asphalt can last to twenty up to twenty years. Ton mastic up to twenty years. Fine gap, fine gap greater asphalt can last up to twenty five years. Okay, um, actually some of the the surface in the capsule there they 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 also can last up to fifteen years. But we don't we didn't cover the concrete uh, concrete rod concrete rod has um, the is performing much better than the flexible pavement. You know, it's uh, like it can last up to forty years for the life. So. Yep. So the so in terms of the uh the service life, the best one is the fine gap created asphalt for light for light traffic. But for the heavy traffic, actually the these two, the storm mastic asphalt and the dense crater asphalt they're doing they are actually performing quite 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 well. The gap created is on um, the life is not as long as the the others. Okay, so that's the end. The end for this um, wearing cost technology. So we have uh, done everything. Um, the previous, uh, previous recording I think the uh, before this was on the bitumen and the um, spray work, and for this one is on the, and um, this one is on the asphalt. Okay, thank you very much.